Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm bringing you another process video using the Peace and Presence Faith Art Box. This is the September kit from Creative Retreat Kits, and the devotional was written, written by Andrea Lucado. Uh, I do have a memory decks process video that I did for this kit, so I'll link that down below for you guys so you can check that out. Um, today I'm going to be playing in my Bible. I am back in the rose gold illustrating Bible just because I'm trying to fill in some spaces in here, and this page happened to be blank. I'm going to be journaling. John 14 27 says peace I leave with you my peace I give you I do not give to you as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid um, this verse is really standing out to me and is one that I'm kind of holding on to right now so I wanted to just play and do what's relaxing and fun for me so I pulled out some watercolors. I haven't really done very many watercolor videos recently. So um, what I have here is a mixture of um, some of the Oh, are they American Crafts watercolors? Oh my gosh, I cannot remember the names of these ones. They will be all linked down below. And then this row down here is mostly like Daniel Smith Primatech and then some handmade watercolors from Etsy. So this is a um, tin that I put together. I have a video showing how I did this. I will link that down below. It's a much older video um, kind of showing how I put these um, together. But these are the paints I'm gonna be using. And the reason I'm choosing these ones, um, the only reason really is the colors because I'm not really gonna have to mix many colors. The colors that I have in here um, already kind of coordinate with the colors in the kit and that's why I'm reaching for these over you know one of the others that you've seen on my channel before. So off camera, I did go ahead and prep this page with some Daniel Smith Transparent Watercolor Ground. I do have a video all about this. I will link that down below for you guys so you can check that out. Um, I typically apply a very thin or like two or three very thin layers of this. Today I went kind of crazy and I went in with a big um, brush and applied it with a brush two layers so it's very very thick there's going to be lots of texture I'm okay with that uh, I kind of just did that for the sake of being quick uh, I have an entry on the back side of here that I just didn't want to mess with or have anything bleed through or anything like that so it is very very thick with the watercolor ground but that's okay we're just going to go in and do some very loose random florals stick some stickers down for the verse and call it good so let me go ahead and put you on fast forward and I'll get this page put together all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with these florals. Now, I have a couple of tips for you guys. One is to practice uh, watercolor florals on a separate piece of paper, whether it be watercolor cardstock or something like that. Um, I just have some inexpensive Canson watercolor paper that I test things out on. So I kind of try to create a floral arrangement or different florals on there first before going to my page. And that kind of helps give me some confidence, give me some ideas for arrangements and colors and things like that. So I always kind of um, do that. So actually off to the side, off camera, what I don't show is exactly that. I went ahead and tested this all out um, on a piece of watercolor paper first before taking it to the page. But Side note, <laughs> working in your Bible is so different from painting on watercolor paper. Uh, even with the watercolor ground, it's nothing like working on the watercolor paper. I probably should have showed that paper in here just so you could see the difference, but um, it's almost like this ground kind of grabs a hold of the pigment. Um, so it's much more pigmented and the... I don't know, the just, things didn't flow quite as well. It was, wasn't was as like soft and washy looking on the, on the Bible page. And so just keep that in mind. I love how it turned out. It just turned out very different than how it did on, you know, regular watercolor paper. So just keep that in mind. It is gonna be a little bit different, but testing it out beforehand just gives you, you know, some arrangements and sizing and uh, things like that. So just, just play around. But I'm just gonna go in with um, a variety of different little floral shapes here. You can see that they're not perfect. It's just very messy. And I'm trying to stick to purples and blues and pinks like the colors in the kit this month. And um, the nice thing about watercolor is you don't have to worry so much about it covering the Bible text. Uh, these particular watercolors are from Prima, I finally remembered. <laughs> and they are 
a little bit more opaque than like a higher grade watercolor uh, just because they're more geared towards crafters and just the types of colors that are in here like this blue um, that light blue that light pink they have like a white mixed in with it and so it makes it a little bit more opaque but for the most part I can see the text through watercolor no problem and then I'm really only using the purple from the Prima Tech line of Daniel Smith watercolors and um, you can buy those in the tube you can find some Etsy shops online that offer them um, in already poured pans. You just kind of have to look around. So once I've dried that, I'm going to go ahead and add some black watercolor splatters. I don't have a black in this particular watercolor set that I was using, so I pulled out another one for black and made sure that was good and dry. Now we're going to work on the stickers. So what I you can't hardly see is that I do have a piece of plastic laying down there, and I'm going to stick all my stickers on that piece of plastic first just to kind of figure out how I want um, the arrangement and um, that kind of thing. And then what you're going to see here in a second when I get it all spelled out, it's going to say my piece. I give you uh, do not let your hearts be afraid I believe is what I end up putting down there um, but what I've got it on this plastic and then I can move that plastic around and decide where I want uh, to stick these down onto the Bible page so you'll see here I can kind of test things out where I want it you can see I've used the exact same colors as what these stickers are so I'm kind of trying to decide you know, wherever I put them may get lost in those florals. I think that you could recreate this page and it would be really beautiful if you used blacks and different tones of grays for the florals and then had your stickers kind of pop off of that. I think that would be really, really pretty as well. So I kind of decided on this bottom right hand corner, right smack dab in my floral arrangement here. And I'm just going to use a T-square ruler where I've um, cut off the end of it so it'll fit in my illustrating Bible. I'm going to use that just to make sure that everything is lined up. And I know you can't read all of this. It kind of gets lost in those florals, but don't worry. We're going to, we're going to fix that here in a second. So I got everything stuck down and I pulled out my Uniball Signo white gel pen. This is usually my go-to for a white pen and I'm just outlining my stickers. But for some reason, it's just not playing nice over the watercolor ground. Watercolor ground is similar to gesso. So just like gesso eats up your pens, watercolor ground does the same thing. So um, that's why I wanted to stick with stickers rather than pens and things like that. So what I ended up pulling out was some Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. This is a super opaque white paint basically. Mine for some reason is super super thick and goopy more so than I think it's supposed to be and then I'm also using a glass dip pen. I know I don't think I've ever shown this on a video before but I've had this in my stash for months and months and months kind of playing with it but basically it's a glass pen and at the end of it, rather than holding ink, it's kind of got like a spiral detail and that's what holds onto the ink on the outside of the pen. Um, it's like a traditional old fashioned, like a quill pen or something like that. It kind of writes in the same way. So you dip it into the ink or the paint or the watercolor, whatever you're gonna write with, let it kind of draw up into the spiral and then you can write with it. But you can see I'm having to go back and dip it quite frequently. Um, you have to do the same thing if you were writing with you know, something a little bit thinner, but because this is so thick, I'm having to go through and dip it several times, um, but I'm using that to outline the stickers and the letters. And so it is a little bit goopy, a little bit messy. It's not gonna be perfect. Um, I definitely need to perfect using this pen and uh, the bleed proof white is not the ideal medium to use with this pen um, but I bought it so I could use it with some of the Amsterdam acrylic inks and things like those um, to do my journaling and kind of play around with that so but it did get the job done. You can see those stickers stand out just a little bit more off of that floral arrangement. And then at the top here, I'm just going to use a few more of the stickers to create a little tab cluster. I have that one that says uh, not of this world and then that little dove. On the back side, I'm just applying a powder tool wherever the stickiness is still exposed from those stickers. And that is going to be it for my entry today. We're keeping it very, very simple. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Check out the description box. I will have everything that I used linked down below for you guys. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.